So, so this, if these were parts that there were multiple similars of or something like that, I'd label them. But I think we know exactly uh, exactly what this is, where it came from, and where it's going to go. <laughs> man, why would you get made fun of for zip top bags, man? It's such a great way to organize parts. I, uh, I'm a huge fan. I, I really advocate using this kind of stuff. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually rotate the engine. And um, that way, these cameras right next to it can see see a little bit better here. Let's go ahead and take off the power steering pump. There's two bolts at the back. And I'm pretty sure these are all the same size. And there are bolts in the front. Uh, let's see, there's the other one. And I wanna say there's one more right up here. That one wasn't even tight. We can go ahead and leave the pulley on this. The the Atlanta VW Group, Matthew or Maverick, um, yes, I will have working air conditioning living in the south. You bet your butt I will have air conditioning. So went ahead and took the five bolts off for the power steering pump. Um, this is the, the line that I left on. I went ahead and just put the banjo, uh, the banjo bolt back in as well as the crush washers. So that's going in a bag. Not going to be doing too much with the power steering pump at this point other than cleaning it up and, uh, and <laughs> putting it back on. It worked pretty well, uh, probably cleaning and painting the pulley. There was no issues with it, so I'm not... Uh, no need to do more work than I have to on any of this stuff, really. So I went ahead and hit this with a little bit of lubricant. Hit it with a little bit more. These bolts don't look tight either. Uh, that looks like a 16 millimeter. Probably need an extension on this one. Yes, Dustin, this will be getting a Mark IV head gasket. I have it somewhere around here. Uh, shout out to Paul from Shop DAP for uh, hooking me up with the gasket set. We'll be talking more about that as we uh, as we go through. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the bolts for the AC compressor. Maybe. That one wasn't even tight. How's that noise, that impact? That was pretty cool. Oh, uh, I'm gonna break this loose here with the hand tools. How are we looking? Stock cams? No, uh, not doing stock cams. Not 100% sure on what cams I'm gonna be doing yet, but it will not have stock cams in it. It's one of those things I regret. On, uh, on the Cabrio swap is that I didn't do stock, uh, that I did stock cams. You'll notice that I twisted these in just a little bit. And the reason I did that is I'm gonna actually give them a little tap, not wailing on them, just give it a little tap. That'll actually make taking the compressor out a little bit easier. Yeah, I'm thinking 262s is probably what I'm going to go with. Uh, Sean, it's a 98 GTI. So. Now, the reason that I tapped on those, so this is how, this is how the bolts. Uh, oh, hey, what's up, dude? How you doing? So, uh, yeah, it was good to meet you today, man. I really appreciate you stopping me and saying, hey. So the reason I twisted these back in and gave them a tap was to drive this sleeve right here back a little bit. This sleeve gets pulled onto the bracket when you tighten it. And if you just tap them back a little bit, it makes it a ton easier to get the compressor out. 
Otherwise, you have to like rock it back and forth or get a pry bar, and they can be seized on there pretty pretty darn well. So um, I don't recommend hitting it very hard, just enough to drive this back just a little bit. And as we go back together with this kind of stuff, I'll be sure to show you guys some tricks on getting these completely recessed so that the compressor and alternators, the other one, basically just fall on and then uh, makes it super easy to install. So I went ahead and started both, both. <laughs> that one's for you, Kevin. Uh, both bolts back in so that they don't get lost. I don't know that this is gonna fit completely in a Ziploc bag. Um, looks like we're losing battery juice here. Luckily, there we go. Sorry about that last creepy shot. Um, let's see, new pistons and rods. Not new pistons for me anyway. Um, thanks, Sean, appreciate that. Not new rods, but they're all gonna get rehabbed. New bearings, the pistons are going out to a place in Denver, North Carolina to get a coating. I'll have more about that when I, uh, <laughs> when I learn more about that. It, um, one of those things that you have a friend that you trust a lot and uh, they recommend you do something and they have a way more experience, so you, you go ahead and do it. Steve, I had an ear break off an alternator too and, because I used to just whack on it with a hammer to, um, to press that back. And then I broke like a $400 alternator and have never done that again. So I have a really cool trick on, uh, on getting that stuff off that works fantastic. I'll be sure to uh, share that with you guys when the time comes. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the accessory bracket off. This will all be cleaned and painted or powder coated one. I'm not really sure what way I'm going to go with it just yet but it also helps when you grab the right size bit. There we go. That's a six millimeter, I think. Yeah, six millimeter. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, we'll uh, go through some cool stuff on this stuff. So one tip too is while you're doing stuff like this and pulling bolts out, look at them as they come out because if they end up being a different length, you want to know that before you have an entire handful of bolts. So like that one's different. So what I'll do is I'll put this one back in and it looks like this one's probably different as well. So these, let's see, that one's different. So I'm going to set and do these like this, do this one here. This one looks short. So that's the same as the other ones that we pulled out, the first two. Now watch this. I'm going to leave, that one has a washer on it. I'm going to leave all of these in here just like that and uh, try, try and make sure that they stay that way. A couple of things you can do, you can put tape around the bottom of them. That'll hold them in place. Um, zip ties will hold it in place. I'm going to see if I have any a little masking tape and we can just tape it all on together and uh, prevent the bolts from getting put in the wrong spot. You could mark them with a paint marker, any of that kind of stuff. You know, whatever, whatever's kind of the easiest for you is what I recommend. So I'm going to get some, uh, what clutch am I going to use? I'm kind of thinking of that I'm going to be working with Black Forest on a, on a clutch. Not 100% sure of that yet, but that's sort of where I'm leaning at this point. So I'm going to just take some tape. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this on here. And as long as I can get the tape to stick to itself, which it did just fine. So it doesn't need to be pretty um, as long as it holds the bolts on. And so I'm going to do that for these up at the top. And then what I'm going to do 
take these gloves off. One of the problems with wearing gloves is uh, <laughs> is having to take them off all the time. This is actually gaffer's tape, a lot used in photography. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, it doesn't have that weird eh, uh, weird tackiness that duct tape can get. So this is the other way. That's the other way that works really well for holding bolts in. Uh, there we go. Just like this, just around the threads. It won't have all that sticky gumminess on it. The bolt won't come out. Everybody's happy. This tape is cheap. Putting a bolt in a wrong spot can be bad, bad news. Uh, don't know why that came up twice. Sorry, Drew, I missed whatever came up twice. Um, so, sorry about that, <laughs> whatever you're talking about. All right, so our bracket's off, bolts are secured, everyone's happy there. Maybe not everyone. Get that on there. All right, so that's secured. So we have this side of the block stripped. We have the other side of the block stripped. Um, next is going to be the water pump. Let's see, how do we look over here? I'm gonna actually move over to the other side. Do a quick eval on the pump. So what we're also going to want to make sure we do is inspect these bolts. I can leave the pulley on, which I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, but you really want to take a close look at the bolts. These are either going to be triple squares or they're going to be Allens. I, I can't stress enough, it's important to get the tool all the way into this bolt. If you don't, and you run the risk of rounding it out. If you end up rounding this out, it can be a really unhappy time to try and extract them, especially if you have trouble getting the pulley off. So what I do, I don't recommend abusing our tools, but what I'll do is I'll get the, um, the Allen in, I'll set it in there, check, All right. and I'll just give it a little tap with a hammer. You don't need to whack on it or wail on it, just a little tap, and then usually that makes them come right out. But having that stripped inside of there makes for a really unhappy time. So we got one, we got two. The more experience you get with stuff like this, you develop, uh, develop a feel, and you'll actually be able to feel when a tool, uh, like a tool or a bit isn't installed in the bolt all the way and you'll know right away that it's not right. So I got a pretty good feel. Plus on this one, I can kind of see it uh, where it's at. And if you'll notice, there's some witness marks on the end of the bit. I don't see them anymore. So I know it's all the way installed. Boy, we were doing so good too. I thought that one was gonna come off as well. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Had me nervous there for a second. Now, these bolts are probably going to get replaced. They're nasty. I can clean them up with a thread chaser and clean the heads of them. But if there's any kind of wear or weirdness in it, they're going to go in the trash and I'm going to put new ones in. Focus. Focus. Let's see. Focus. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to show the YouTube folks this. There we go. Sometimes getting the autofocus on the camera <laughs> can be challenging. So, got the three bolts out. Now it's time to walk this water pump off. Sometimes they'll come off nice and happy. Other times they won't. I'm going to get a small pry bar. And, uh, get a small pry bar and try and, uh, try and nurse this off a little bit. Oh, that actually came off really easy. Uh, 
Wow. You can see all this crusty nasty in here. <laughs> that, uh, that, my friends, is an unhappy cooling system. Here's a close-up of this water pump. This is why, this is why we're getting a new water pump. So that's all icky. It's actually like that in the cooling jackets of the block as well. Um, <laughs> Chris, I thought about that. Don't, don't, don't worry. Um, yeah, so see all this inside of here too. Pretty nasty business. Try and get it up close for the YouTube folks. So this is why we're going to go ahead and put a new water pump in it. I'll reuse the pulley. There's nothing wrong with the pulley. Um, it'll be fine. I'll probably put some shiny bolts on it or clean them up really well. And uh, go back together. With, I'll paint the pulley just because that's kind of how I roll. Got it this far apart. Might as well do it right and uh, make it look pretty. For those of you guys that didn't see, it's been a while. Um, the Cabrio that I did, sorry, the Cabriolet that I did the VR swap in it, uh, that was one of the things that took so long is that I wanted to paint everything and make it look all nice and pretty. And uh, I kind of want to do that for this car as well. So uh, this stuff is all off, guys. We're, we're in really good shape. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the engine around. And we're going to do the backside timing cover. And, uh, wow, that's a lot of oil left in there. And get that cover off and uh, start jamming on that. What's the easiest? That's easy. <laughs> yeah, Steve, I'm surprised. Normally, and especially with the way this one looks, normally they're uh, like super seized inside of there. So if uh, worst case scenario, I was going to come from this way and just do what Chris said in a pry bar and a hammer and whack the hell out of it and get it out of there. So let's put this stuff up there, throw my bolts in with the water pump, clean up my tools a little bit. So, you know, this, this build has taken a bit longer than, not really than I expected, but definitely longer than I wanted, as things like this always tend to. But, you know, you guys have pointed out, and, and uh, I kind of have always felt that way. I'd much rather take a little bit extra time now than go back, have to go back, or, you know, regret not doing something. Regret not putting cams in it when I had the entire engine apart, like on the Cabrio. Uh, da, 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 Travis, right on, man. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. So let's get this. So this is the timing cover, the lower timing cover. Here's our crankshaft right here. Uh, there's a gear here that connects the two chains as well as drives the oil pump. So this is just basically a series of 10 millimeter bolts. I think there's only two that are different lengths. So I'm gonna get a magnetic tray to make sure that none of these bolts go rogue. And we're just going to jam out, check my battery on my uh, Milwaukee. Have you guys seen this? This thing's so cool, check this out. It's got a little, little battery monitor on it. You can change the torque settings on it. Really rad stuff. We'll just work our way around. Every once in a while, I'm going to stop and look just to make sure. Just to make sure. These are all the right length. This bracket right here at the top looks like someone bent it. I'm just going to bend that back. The the coolant, uh, the coolant hose bracket was broken, so uh, I'll just hold on to that, but it's busted. Yeah, it's, it's just an impact driver, but 
This is the Surge. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it has like a fluid pack inside of it, which um, makes the feedback really, really low. It's also a quite a bit quieter, which is, it's, it's a different experience for sure um, than a normal electric impact. Uh, Tommy, so the timing chain guides were broken. It had what I assume was a leaking head gasket um, because I was getting some coolant in the morning, some smoke in the morning, and found a little bit of bearing, not really damage, just a bit of bearing unhappiness. So decided to go all in and just tear the whole dang thing apart and uh, get her happy again. Make sure I didn't miss any bolts. There are alignment pins, which this tends to get hung up on a little bit. So we just take our time, work our way around it. This would be a good opportunity if we had two screwdrivers to use two screwdrivers to walk this off. And of course, I'll probably get hung on all the bolts. So this is the rear main seal right here. You can see all of this nasty, nasty corrosion and crud. This is from poor oil changes, lack of maintenance. And actually, um, if you look at this line right here, this is where the timing chain looks like it may have scrubbed it a little bit. So, but yeah, all this crusty corrosion crap right here. Um, We'll go ahead and put a new seal in it, clean this, probably powder coat it as well. All right, here's our timing. Here's our timing nonsense. Um, this was our upper chain. Well, I guess technically it still is the upper chain. Here's the upper chain. This is one of the guides, one of the guides that wasn't broken anyway. Um, this gear connects the two timing chains as well as drives the oil pump. Looks like this tensioner was pretty much toast. So uh, I'm probably going to leave this on. One other thing we're going to need to make sure we do is um, take a really good look at this gear. Because if these teeth are worn at all, then this will be something I want to replace.